Hi everyone, let's talk about the wheel. I realized it's time to do a new video on this wheel, okay? Okay, we got the dog and cat fighting here. That's gonna be interesting. All right, so let's talk about the wheel, just the plain old technique and how to practice it. So a good way to practice the wheel would be just like this, right? Let's say we take a C major chord, but we'll do a little better than that since that's kind of annoying, we have the two thumbs on the same key. We don't want the two thumbs on the same key. Take a D7 chord. So D7 in the left hand and D7 in the right hand as well. And what I like to do is do a D7 flat five. Okay? So the notes, again, is D, F sharp, G sharp, and C. Same thing in the left hand, D, F sharp, G sharp and C. Why do we pick these notes? Well, they just fit the hand nice, okay? If you're, depending on how small your hand is, what age you are, well, this is going to be a little easier than an octave since it's a seventh. Plus the black keys are a little further and the second and third fingers are also a little bit longer, right? We won't use the fourth finger at all in this exercise. All right, so if we just start with the right hand, you start by doing this. See how we're going over and around here. The wrist is up while we're playing down. That's what we want to do so that the weight transfers. That's the point of this exercise. And the point of using the wheel is to be able to transfer the weight. That's what we want to do, all right? So I think I talk about it enough in all the other videos, pretty much uh, maybe even every single video on, and that we look at a repertoire or most of them anyway. So we'll just focus on this exercise here in this piece, you know, and work on this so that you get this weight transfer, right? We don't want to be using the fingers for this exercise. I know a lot of teachers, unfortunately, really teach this all the time. You know, maybe fingers have their use at, at some time, but What's important is that we find out how to do the, how to connect ourselves to the instrument more. And the fingers is always gonna be a, a, a disconnected thing if you're just relying solely on the fingers, right? Now we're looking at how to connect all of this together. So, it's kind of like, yes, when you do a chord, you can, you can put, put that as a solid chord and then go. You can do it fast, but do it slowly as well. And then we start to go the other way. Notice how now the wrist is down. We're going from below. That's how we transfer the weight. With the right hand, when you're going up, the wrist is down. But we came up at the end. You see that? So it's kind of like going like this. And the almost all the time, the second and third fingers is what's going to be at the lowest or highest point of the wheel. If we're going uh, this way, they're at the highest point, these second and third fingers. If we're going ta da da di, now they're at the lowest point of the wrist. Yeah, we're talking about the wrist here. Wrist is at the high point, and then we're going down. And when we're going up, wrist is at the low point here, second and third finger. And we're coming back up, uh, back up here on the fifth finger. Once you have that, start to make a complete circle. See how we're going like this. We're making, you're making a, a circular motion here with your wrist. That's what we want. And not playing like this. This is how you've been playing. This is how you're learning to play now, right? Okay, left hand is exactly the opposite as far as movement goes. So if we mirror this, we do it in mirror motion, we'll have the same movement in both hands. It's also handy because a lot of times your right hand is a little better than the left hand. So this way the right hand teaches the left hand how to do it a little bit better. So that's good. You might have a more facility, possibly, uh, with your left hand when you put the two hands together this way. So we can go slowly, very important to go slowly, and 
and fast as well. And notice how, ah, now we can play with the, the forces of gravity in the music a little bit. Yeah, yeah, have these kind of effects. Yeah. So this is the way that you're getting more of your soul, your personality, your, let's say personality for now, or just playing more of you into the instrument because you're using more of your body to play rather than this disconnected fingers like this. Now we're connecting everything. Okay, so after that, work on this. You can work on the right hand, the left hand, or it doesn't matter. Sometimes. Once this becomes, uh, starts to become a little more integrated, a little more automatic, you, you, this sh should feel natural. It's the most natural way we can play is, is like this. Then you can do parallel movement. Don't bother doing this in the beginning, okay? Uh, just do this once you've worked on this. Then you work on the parallel because now we're doing crazy eights, yeah? When one hand is up, the other hand is down. That's harder than, than doing this. Okay, I hope this is making sense. Now, here's an exercise to establish more of the connection from the arm to the keyboard. Okay, what we're going to do is play every note in front and double it. Okay, like, like this, right? The, the reason we're doing this is when you do this, you're not using this guy anymore, the finger. We're not relying on that, okay? It might have its use sometimes to articulate some things in the music, but the, the more challenging thing is to be able to connect more of your body to the instrument, okay? So, in that, for that purpose, we do this. Now you're literally playing with your arm. Yeah, the finger touches the key, but it's not the action and motion is not in the finger. It's, it's actually coming from the tricep, in this case, going in the front like this. So, uh, we have to stay high in the key, otherwise you, you get what just happened to me. It won't repeat for the first note. All right. You don't need to slide on the note here. I'm gonna sneeze. Maybe later. All right. Just you know, you have that grip right there. That's that's fine. But the movement is coming really from here. Then do it with two hands. All right, this is establishing the connection that you have from, from the arm into the instrument. That's what we want versus having uh, independent fingers, okay? Or the fingers working independently from the rest of you or your body, yeah? That's what we want. So that's good. Now we have this. This is good because all this is connected to your back as well, right? The triceps are also connected to our to our shoulder blades and our back. So we can do all kinds of stuff with that. But we'll keep it basic for now. Really basic. I think I think that's that's pretty much the outline of this exercise. So you have your D7 chord, make the five flat, and then this work on this then do a full circle work on it fast sometimes it's easier to get these things a little fast but also it's very important to be able to do it slow feel like you're underwater doing this in slow motion with a little resistance same thing in the left hand you work on the left hand down up down up two hands And it's not just down, up, down, up, like this. You're going around to draw a full circle with your wrist, okay? Another thing you can, you can try as well is keep the shoulder really low and 
sometimes sometimes that frees this up a little more. So it kind of feels like you're you're doing this, yeah? You know this really relaxed fingers. You don't have to do anything. It becomes very, very easy to play. Yeah, I feel like I should explain a little bit where we're going to use this in the music, of course. So anything that's arpeggios. All right, I have a Chopin a first ballad here in front of me. This is going to be rotation. And then this is wheel right here. Uh, if we have, you know, how about that? Um, that's a very good example again of this. Any scale is also using the same curve of that wheel. Basically, <laughs> if the notes are not going up, down, up, down, that's when we use rotation. Then it, we use the wheel. We're using this, and this is, I think, the easiest exercise I can think of to work on this. All right, here's another thing. All right, so C da dee da dum, ba da da dee da dum is just like this. It's the same thing. one is only one-sided, right? All right, what other examples? Even when you have... There's also a wheel. We're using that here. Of course, that's maybe not the best example for this. Um, okay. This, of course, this ballad is full of those wheels, but you know, as is, as is most music, it's pretty much the core of what we're doing technique-wise. As you can imagine, because most of the music is made up of notes that are going up, consecutive notes that are going up. That's when we're using this, or consecutive notes going down. It's when we go up, down, up, down, then we're using something different. We have some rotation. Here's a nice wheel. Right? Okay, just something a little bit different here. If we take... Uh, Bach. Okay, we're going to go in Bach. These are the small preludes and fugues. These are great, by the way. Fantastic. If, if you want something easier than a uh, well-tempered clavier. Okay. The same thing. We're using wheel. Lots of wheel here. And that's all wheel. Yeah. Where else do we have wheel? That's also wheel. Are you starting to get it? There's a little rotation in that one. When you go only up one note and then back down, then we're on the rotation. I love that trill. Yeah, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six wheels here. Now, they're all going down, right? Ti da da, ti da da, ti da da, ti da da. But we are going back up, right? We're not only going down here. -da 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 -da. So it's still a full, complete wheel. We're doing all that. OK, 
Okay, next one is really a rotation thing. So we won't look at that. Here we go. So again, any arpeggio, and let's find a few scales here because. great all right take little things you know don't get obsessive when you're working on the technique and feel like you can't play anything unless it's perfect it doesn't have to be you just work on it consistently and gradually by and by it's a little too bright okay by and by you're going to integrate it maybe these four notes satisfaction is when you put the wheel and rotation together especially in this kind of music like Bach because he's always switching between those the, the zigzag motion and the wheels often mostly wheel with little things little um, uh, notes that go up and down right uh, one more example okay how about this same thing instead of this uh, you risk to be tight as well when you play like this so yeah bum, 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 bum. that's very good uh, where's the example I was looking at today oh here's another one okay how about this all right just those three notes that's a little more complex because we have to hold an E here. E up, up. Just out of focus a little bit. All right. Yes. So we're still using it there. Okay, this is the example I was getting at eventually. So there's a lot of rotation happening here. See, that's like the scale going down. It's this thing here. So whenever you have it, let's take an easier spot to uh, the end of the first page. These three notes are going up. Rotation here. A little zigzag. And again see so wheel is also a scale all right I think that pretty much covers it for for this video if there's one thing I can add what if we don't do it that way what if we do it backwards upside down right very strange you know doesn't work very well it's possible we can still it is possible to transfer the weight this way but now we're upside down we're supposed to go like this that's the natural way of doing it not to have, uh, I'm sorry you can try it upside down it just might help you understand or get this um, weight transfer because it's it's awkward but it still works somehow there's sometimes a few examples in music where an upside down wheel can be more effective. Uh, this one we would usually go like this, right? It just doesn't work very well. That being the uh, uh, Chopin Etude Opus 10, number four in C sharp minor. So it happens sometimes that you'll use these things upside down. But don't worry about that for now. Take the exercise, maybe backtrack the video, make sure you have the right notes. And yeah, review the video as well, just to, to go over, because I'm sure there'll be a few little things you forget. So that'll help you fine tune your wheel practice. When you come to my masterclass, we'll work on lots 
of wheels and rotation.